Hello and welcome back to Duke's Copy TV. Now this is the second in our six part series looking at the way trends affect the way we buy and sell. I'm joined once again by Ago Clotons. Ago, thank you so much for coming in again. It's great to be back. Now on this programme we're going to be looking at the merger between marketing and sales. Now firstly, how has marketing changed in recent years and grown and also the relationship between sales and marketing? As you know, I used to be in marketing um, not too long ago. Uh, I mean, and by that I mean I used to be a, uh, a marketing executive in a big corporation um, for the wealth management division of a Fortune 50 financial services firm. And five years ago my job was very much about brand. It was very much about protecting, maintaining, growing the brand franchise, growing the brand, um, and that was the vast majority in the focus of my work. I think today that is very, very different. Um, brand is still important, especially for large corporations, but in addition to that, we've definitely seen a shift to um, inbound and, and more direct forms of marketing. And by that I mean, Marketing today is much more expected to contribute real, tangible financial returns to the bottom line. Um, in other words, increased revenue, increased sales, and not just focus on um, how do we build a strong brand franchise. So that certainly is one of the changes that, that we've seen. Another one that we've seen is the traditional line in the sand between marketing on the one hand and sales on the other hand. Um, is gradually disappearing, um, and, and, and so especially in professional services, we're certainly seeing that um, marketing and sales are now um, working much closer together, working much more collaboratively, and I think to a certain degree it's almost indistinguishable whether a particular activity is the responsibility of marketing and sales. Specifically, um, for example, lead generation um, or lead qualification um, with you know inbound marketing technologies, with uh, um, all of the you know marketing technology that we have, and with the role of sales um, changing and, and also accountability changing, we're seeing much more um, a hybrid, uh, very close collaboration between marketing and sales. So, what can companies do to make their marketing and their sales align better? I think the first thing always is to you know sit down together and to. Um, discuss the joint you know, roles and responsibilities. Who does what traditionally and um, how can we work together more closely? Um, a second step is definitely to set up some joint accountability and some objectives. Um, and by joint accountability, I mean accountability for results that goes beyond each individual function. So they need to be jointly accountable in order to work towards a specific result. The third one is, um, as always, is to try and generate some quick wins. So to make sure that um, if you're launching a new initiative, let's say that sales and marketing will work together on tapping into a new segment and generating a certain amount of qualified leads. Um, it's important that you score some quick wins because it builds confidence, it builds the business case for making that happen within the organization, and it builds that you know, sort of early track record of success that is so crucial in, um, in any change effort, really. The fourth step is to implement some feedback loops. And by feedback loops, I mean um, identify key performance indicators or ways of figuring out whether you're making progress, whether you're doing better um, in, in terms of a specific indicator. And then the fifth one is basically to measure, 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 um, and make sure that you make decisions based on what works objectively in terms of numbers in order to, uh, to drive that forward. I think if you follow that five-step process, um, you're bound to do pretty well in terms of aligning sales and marketing. That's some great advice. And lastly, um, what does this all mean for professional as well as financial services firms? First and foremost, it means an opportunity to get ahead of the competition, in, which in the current market, I think, in and of itself is a tremendous advantage. Now, when I say get ahead, I don't just mean you know, get ahead by a little bit. What we're seeing time and time and time again is that companies that align sales and marketing companies that leverage technology and companies that measure and understand what works and do more of that, they, it's, it's like the snowball effect. It starts very small and then layers and layers and layers start adding on until you have this huge thundering snowball that's you know, careening, careening is that a word? <laughs> Going down the mountain um, and that's when you start seeing real tangible progress happen. Um, another thing is you, you get obviously improve decision making through data. So you understand as a marketer, but also as, a, as an executive, as a CEO, um, where are we gonna get the most bang for our marketing buck? Uh, where are we going to get the most results? 
And then finally, for sales, for example, um, this kind of data and this kind of collaboration and tapping marketing for intelligence provides tremendous opportunities for uh, cross-selling and upselling. So selling um, new products into existing clients or selling um, existing products into new clients. Well, thank you, Ago, for coming in and sharing your insights once again with us. You're welcome. And to catch the next in the series, just click back to the Duke's Copy website at the same time again next week.